Well, it's Saturday, and Chris and I picked a lot of vegetables to, this morning. And I picked probably three to four grocery bags, like Walmart bags, full of tomatoes this week. And I've been letting some of them ripen, and some of them were already ripe, but you know, it's a battle with um, rabbits around here. So if I see one that's starting to get ripe and um, it looks like it's gonna be a target, I'm gonna grab it and then just let it ripen. But I'm gonna show you guys how I make my salsa. And let me tell you, I had a student tell me one time that my salsa was better than her mother's, her mother who is from Mexico. And that to me was like a huge massive compliment. Everyone who tries, tries my salsa just loves it. When I told Matthew I was making salsa today, he was like, and you're bringing us some. So they really like my salsa. It's pretty simple, but I actually also can mine so that it, it stays preserved for however long. You can certainly make it and then put it in the fridge if you think you're gonna go through two pints of salsa, two pints plus, it's a little more than two pints in you know just a few weeks time i wouldn't let it i wouldn't put it in the fridge for more than about a month um after you make it so here's my salsa i have here four cups of rough chopped seeded tomatoes what i did is i blanched them in hot water until the skin rips open dip them in ice water really quickly and then i seed them and I actually saved the juice. Um, I pour, I seed them over a big strainer, and I saved peel the juice. Peel them and seed them. Yeah, peel them and seed them um, over a big strainer, and save the juice because I actually can can that too and use it later for soups and stuff. But four cups of peeled, seeded, rough chopped tomatoes. That's what's already in that. Don't look at that. That's because this is like my fourth four cups. Um, but anyway, four cups. And then I've got a half a cup of freshly squeezed lime juice. You can put the pulp in there, just don't put the seeds in there. Have a teaspoon of kosher salt. I, I do three quarters of a cup of onions. You can certainly go up to a cup of onions, finely diced. For me, three quarters of a cup is about where I like it at. So dump all that beautiful stuff in there. And then I have a tablespoon here of cilantro and a tablespoon of freshly chopped garlic. I just think fresh is best. Um, Last time I made salsa, I actually grew the cilantro in my backyard. I did not, uh, somebody forgot to um, water my cilantro while I was gone for a week, and so my cilantro died. But that cilantro came from Imperfect Foods, as did the limes that I squeezed and the garlic. And it was still pretty cheap, but the tomatoes and the jalapenos came from my yard. This is two jalapenos. Now listen, finely diced, like very finely diced. It is up to you how hot you want your salsa. This is about the, the hot that I want for two pints because the jalapenos that we grew this year, grew, they're, they're, they're pretty warm. And I don't want them, I, I don't want a super hot salsa. I'm not one of those people that likes to melt my face off. So um, I just, I think two is enough for two pints. And I seeded them. I seeded them and I chopped them finely. You can certainly add more, you can add less. Find your happy spot, okay? So I'm gonna put this on medium heat and I'm gonna wait for it to start simmering. And once it starts to simmer, I'm gonna let it simmer for about 10 minutes and I'll be back to show you what the next steps are. Okay, my, um, my, my goodies have been bubbling for just a couple of minutes all together. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my potato masher and just kind of giving it a, a quick mash so that it will 
release even more of that juice from those tomatoes and start mixing that up together. But I'm gonna continue to let, oh my goodness, I wish y'all could smell this. Ooh, it's starting to smell like salsa and it's only been going for a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna continue to let this boil for about another eight minutes. I've got my, and this is obviously way more than the two pints I told you my recipe makes. This is two pints times five with a little extra, so it probably will end up being close to a dozen pints. Um, anyway, I've got my pressure cooker here, getting it ready to boil. You're gonna want, in the end, you want enough water in it to cover your jars by um, about an inch. In the oven, I hot pack my salsa, which means it's still gonna be bubbling while I'm packing it, and I'm gonna pack it in my sterilized jars that I'm keeping warm in the oven on 250 degrees. There's water in the bottom of that pan with the jars and water in there with the rings and lids on top of the lids, keeping everything nice and hot and sterile so that um, when I'm ready to put my salsa in jars, everything will be about the same temperature. I forgot I, I had a, a uh, I don't want to say a blonde moment, my daughter will get offended, but I had a moment the other day, I was tired, and I put cold lime, uh, lemon juice in the jars that I was gonna, um, in the hot jars. No, the water was hot, the jars were room temperature, the lemon juice was cold, and I sat them in the boiling water, and my jars cracked. That was, that was just a moment for me. I would not ordinarily do that. So. Anyway, this is going to bubble for about another seven minutes, and I'll show you the next step. This is my best friend when it comes to making salsa. What? What are you looking at, Chris? Anyway. A shadow on it made it look like it was dirty. Okay. I'm like, ah! No, it's not dirty. Um, I know, because I cleaned it last time I used it. So, I don't like a super, super chunky salsa. It doesn't have to be like ice cream smooth, but um, I do like to make my salsa pretty chunk less. Uh, kind of like what you get in a lot of Mexican restaurants, not like what you buy in the store in the jar. So I just give this a whirl until I get it to my desired chunkiness. In a minute I'll come back and show you how I do my canning of my salsa. Okay. Time to pack the salsa. I'm gonna grab me a couple of cups full. Do this the easy way because that's the right measurement. Pour it in there. Still got some chunks to it. You do not want it to go more, you want about a half inch of headspace at the top. I'm going to pour a couple of these and then I'm going to get my lids and show you what I do next. My boys are going to be so happy when they see us tomorrow that I brought them some salsa. Y'all just don't understand. They love my salsa. Okay, so my lids are still really hot and my rings. Pull them up out of the water. Here. I try not to touch the rims if I can at all avoid it. Dry it off. You don't want water on your rim. You don't want a dirty lid. You know, lid on, ring on. You don't have to tighten it as tight as it'll go, but you do need to tighten it so that it does not let that lid lift up at all during the processing. So bringing this over here. My water is bubbling in my food processor or at my pressure cooker. And I've got to really quickly hurry up, get the other ones canned, get them in there. I'm gonna put the lid on it. I'm gonna let it have a hot water bath for 10 minutes and then it'll be ready to serve. So really hope that you guys try this. I could add a couple of more jalapenos to a couple of jars to make it hotter if I wanted to, but today I'm just trying to get it done. Um, but another time, um, I'll make more because my tomato plants are producing like mad. And I'll probably make some really hot stuff that my boys like too. See you soon. Try my recipe. Y'all take care.